Okay, this one's on condensers. I'm just a couple of pictures of them here. This is a fan force condenser for an air conditioner, fin coils with the fan in the center. Now this next one is uh, copper coils with uh, aluminum fins and uh, covered with a kind of a little screen. This last one, uh, this is a spine uh, fin coil. It's all aluminum and it just has a bunch of little fine uh, spines on the aluminum coil. Okay, the condenser's job. The condenser has three functions. The first function is to de-superheat. Okay, we're coming from the compressor here, going over like this. The yellow is the hot gas, de-superheating down until, and this is an air-cooled condenser that can be water-cooled, uh, it runs between 20 and 30 degrees above the outside ambient. So it's going to take this hot gas, which uh, may be coming, oh, it could be 130, 180, there's all sorts of different numbers, different uh, types of systems would have uh, and it will desuperheat it until it gets to between 20 and 30 degrees above the ambient temperature you can actually feel this in the top of the condenser if you put your hand on it this will be warmer than this will okay desuperheating first job one it once it gets to where we have a gradient in the uh, coloring then it is removing heat, condensing. Okay, at this point, between here and here, it is a saturated mix, and it is getting rid of the vast majority of the heat that's in the gas. So it's condensing in this area. This will all feel the same if you uh, were to put your hand on the uh, tubing of the condenser. It'll all be about the same temperature. Okay, when it reaches the bottom of the condenser, the last turn or two in the bottom of the condenser, all the gaseous refrigerant we started with up here has turned into a liquid. It has expelled the vast majority of the heat that was absorbed by the evaporator and it's all liquid. Okay, that, the third job of the condenser then is to subcool. Subcooling the liquid, you can superheat a gas, you can't subcool a gas, you can subcool a liquid, you can't superheat a liquid. Okay, it becomes a liquid. We want to ensure that all of the refrigerant that reaches the expansion device is a liquid. We don't want it to be part liquid and part gas as it up, is up in here because that will interfere with the function of the expansion device. So, desuperheat, condense, subcool. Subcool will increase the efficiency of the equipment. And I'll talk about how much it increases it when we get into expansion devices. But the more I can subcool the uh, liquid, the higher the efficiency in general of the machine. Newer air conditioners and refrigeration systems uh, have much higher subcools than we used to have. The numbers I used to pass out were were five to 10 degrees. Uh, those are not solid numbers. Manufacturers should be telling you what numbers you should have for that. Uh, but if you have no other source, I used to say five to 10 degrees. 
Uh, now it's more like 10 and above. You see a lot of 11, 13s and the like because that cooler liquid down there is going to make a more efficient system. Okay, one other thing on condensers. Ideally a condenser would be about a quarter larger than the evaporator. In practice it's really not done that way. Uh, but the reason being is when the compressor compresses the gas it takes energy. That's why this gas is hot. This will usually burn you if you, uh, if you touch it uh, as it comes out of the compressor. That's the heat of compression. That's the heat energy that the uh, refrigeration compressor used to compress the gas. So it has to get rid of that first, then it gets rid of all the heat that it absorbed in the evaporator, and then it subcools. So that's the uh, condenser. Uh, probably the next one we'll talk about will be the evaporator.